Hey everybody, it's Rust Belt Collector here, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to do a custom kind of kit-bashed 3 and 3 quarter inch Mimbin Officer. Uh, what we have here, this is my 6 inch version. Um, this is actually just very simple. This is General Veers, the Walgreens exclusive 6 inch Black Series figure. And then he's got his Hoth armor on, his officer's hat, and I've given him this cloth um, trench coat which is actually just from a Marvel Gambit action figure. I don't know what line the Gambit figure was from. It was an early one, like it's not a uh, it's not a Marvel Legends. It's a figure from well before that. And yeah, I I got it at a flea market of all things. It was in the bin of action figures for like three bucks, and so I picked up the the Gambit, and I was just like. Man, that trench coat would be perfect for a Mimbin officer. So I slapped it on this guy, and I really, really dig it. You can go over to my Instagram. Link is down in the description where I took some photos of this guy in my Mimbin trenches with other Mimbin troopers, and he fits in really well. Uh, I did weather the fabric a little bit. I added some paint and mud and stuff to give it just a, a less uniform look, and it's fraying a little bit, so that could be fixed with uh, a, a lighter or a match just... You know, be careful so you don't burn your way through this, the cloth or anything. But so I, I made this guy a while ago, and I've been wanting to do a three and three quarter inch version of him, and I just recently acquired the pieces necessary to do that. So in today's video, that's what we're gonna do. This is gonna be really easy, actually, or at least I think it will be. So what I've got here is a some version of the Endor Han Solo. I don't know exactly which one it is. It's from one of the lines where they made him fairly recently, probably like the 30th anniversary or um, Saga Legends, something like that. So there's that guy, and then there's this guy from, again, I think either the Revenge of the Sith or the Saga Legends line. This guy is like Moff Jergerod or something like that. I don't know. He's... Not a great action figure because he has almost no articulation here. And he's just got swivels um, as elbows here, which I always disliked the swivel elbow design for most figures. But we're going to be using him for some of his parts, and then we're going to be using Han Solo for some other of his parts. The first thing, I think, is take this soft goods trench coat off. You can guess, of course, that this will be the trench coat for the Mimbin officer. Again, with all the, the fraying and everything, you can lightly um, take a match to that. That'll take care of that with no problem. And then I kind of dry fitted this custom together already, so I know it does work. And in doing that, I actually had to cut this holster off. It was kind of glued onto his butt there. So, you know, that can come right off now. And then, of course, you got to take off his vest, which is fairly easy, actually. And this is going to be the base figure here. Um, I think it's just better than the officer. Less articulation here. This guy's got really good articulation, and he's got very similar boots. You know, the Han Solo and the officer are very similar in that regard, and these ones are nice high-gloss boots, which is pretty cool. And that makes our base figure right there. The next thing to do is really just to slip this back on. Um, again, this is a very easy kit bash. There's probably other figures that you could do to make it more or less like what you wanted him to look like. There may even be an officer body that you'd want to use in place of this Han Solo, but this is just what I had on hand, and so I thought I would do it really quick and see how it turned out, and oddly enough, I really liked how it turned out. So that'll fit on there just like that. So really, it is just, you know, keeping the Han Solo Endor figure the way that he he comes just taking off the belt and the holster and then wrapping this tightly around him. If you've watched Solo, A Star Wars Story, or um, seen any of the promo photos, the officers have their their coats really tightly buttoned up often. And so I'm going to go with more of a look like this so that it hides his uh, his t-shirt, basically. And then slipping the the gun belt up and over his legs and hips and then to get back into position around his waist will keep the fabric nice and snug in place um, around his torso there. Now of course this just looks like a Endor Han Solo with you know slight variations. So 
what I thought is I'd look at my fodder bin and see if I had any Imperial officers and sure enough I had this guy right here so basically I am going to take this guy's head and do a direct swap right onto Han Solo's body I was actually really surprised that the uh, the the peg size was the exact same it was just a one-to-one -one conversion sometimes you have to either drill out the head a little bit or you have to use some hot glue or something to swap the heads between the two of them but with this Moff Gergerod and this particular Han Solo the heads are a perfect swap over so that makes this kind of kit bashing really simple so right now that is basically about how he's going to look and you might think we're done but actually first we need to take a coffee break That's better. Now you may be thinking that that's just a fun little edit, but what it actually is going to be is weathering for this coat. It's just a little too light and I, I want to dye it. And one of the best things I've seen online for doing that is soaking it in coffee for a little bit. So I brewed a nice strong cup of coffee with just regular beans and we're going to let it soak in there for a little bit and we'll see how it turns out. All right, so it was about, uh, I don't know, maybe an hour that I let it soak there in the coffee. And then I set it in um, my windowsill. I, I wrung it out, you know, wrung out all the water as much as I could, but I didn't pat it down or anything to leave as much of the coffee in it as possible. And I just set it in my windowsill um, where the sun was shining to have it dry out pretty quickly. And, you know, it's hard to say, but I'm pretty sure that it dyed it darker and maybe leaving it in there longer would give it better results. Um, I'll put up a side-by-side -side of what it looks like now versus what it was a little bit earlier in this video. But there's other things that I will be doing to this, um, not in this video, but I will add some other things to it just to uh, weather it up. Probably just some paint to match it up with, like to make like some splatters along the cuffs and along the bottom there. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I think it did turn out really nice. And now I'm just going to assemble the figure just to put it all together, see how all these pieces come together to make a pretty decent Mimbin officer. Now the hardest part with this is going to actually be getting this over top of the cloth and getting it in position at the waist. Um, so I've done this before. I did do like a dry fit of this all before I even sat down to record this video. And just, you know, it's going to be a struggle no matter what. I could cut the belt, but I want as much tension as possible on the belt just so that it does hold the trench coat in place for you know a, just a more dynamic look you know it's not going to be as bunched up or anything like that or too loose making the figure look really heavy you know like heavy overweight kind of deal where he's got a big poofy jacket on something that I did find helpful is to get it past the hips and onto the waist instead of trying to pull the fabric through first you actually slide it into position and then pull the fabric down um, once you have the belt at the waist and that seems to work the best it's it's tricky you know it is a tight fit but like I said I definitely want that tight fit to just make sure that it all looks the best that it can and you could also use a different belt this just happens to be the one that you know I had with the Han Solo figure and you know, you could use any number of belts from Star Wars figures or, you know, even non-Star Wars figures. And then it's just a matter of getting all the different folds into position. You can probably use like a toothpick or something just to adjust different areas of the fabric to get them to lay the way that you want. But ultimately, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. There's a few little tucks here and there that I need to make just to get it to lay right. And I may do other things like add a, a bandolier or something just to make him a more unique character. But overall, this is a good base. This is a good place to start for an officer. Again, you know, you could use a whole host of different figures, but these are just two that I had on hand, and I thought I would make it into a little 
mini tutorial. I just wanted to show how you can kit patch this figure with relative ease. I mean, the Han Solo figure and the um, the Grand Moff or the Moff Tarkin guy, or not Moff Tarkin, but the Moff Jurjarod guy. It's they're pretty easy figures to get, and so it really isn't that difficult to build this custom. And like I said, add your own spin to it. Add your own. Uh, custom little features to make it your own officer. You don't have to copy my recipe 100%, but it is just to go and show you guys how easy it is to make your own movie, semi movie accurate figures, you know? So there he is, all fixed up and looking pretty good. Like I said, I'll have to come in here and trim up these uh, frays that are happening. It, it happens with all the, the soft goods, especially these that are more. Um, cotton like there's some that are polyester and those don't fray as badly but these ones that are more uh, probably more cotton in the blend they just happen to fray more easily so you can fix that and it usually happens with the older figures so nothing to worry about and just for a reference this is my or this is one of my uh, custom mimbin stormtroopers here with the backpack and the pauldron and everything and just wanted to show them off together to see how they would look next to each other and I'd say that's a pretty good fit I mean the officer doesn't need to be the same height as a stormtrooper he could be taller shorter you know whatever and they fit well together like I said I'll definitely add some of this gray color to his coat like add some splotching and some splattering just to kind of blend the two together but I think that this turned out really well I'm I'm happy with it and hopefully this was helpful to you guys if you're working on any sort of Mimbin display or you collect the Mimbin stormtroopers you know it might be nice to have a custom officer to go along with them like the movie so yeah that about wraps it up that's all I've really got to say about these two figures and if the, you found this video helpful I'd appreciate it if you'd leave a thumbs up on it that's always appreciated if you're new to this channel and you know you want these videos to be popping up in your feed regularly Hit that subscribe button, I'll be uploading more content, and you know, if you want notifications, you can ring the bell or whatever, it does something and in the algorithm, and you know, then you get notified that I've made a new video. So there's that. There's also a link down in the description to my Instagram page. You can check out my toy photography. I've done a whole series of different Mimbin shots, both in the three and three quarter inch and the six inch scale lines. So you can go back into like down in my feed and you can look at all those. As always guys, thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next video.